petite cousine, petite cousine, petite cousine, avec Tania. Petite cousine, petite cousine, petite cousine, avec Tania. Une tarte, une tarte, une belle sauce. Et la cuisine de autour du monde. Une salade verte, les noix sucrées. Et bien sûr, la fromage. Petite cousine. <rire> Petite cousine, petite cousine, avec Tania. Petite cousine, petite cousine, petite cousine, avec Tania. Let's get together in our tiny kitchen. Whip up une dîner marvelleux. Savory crêpes and bouillabaisse, check chica and rum, and cookies and cakes. Petite cousine, petite cousine. Petite cousine, avec Tania. Petite cousine, petite cousine, petite cousine, avec toi. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are ya? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Good to see so many smiling faces and a lot of faces that I haven't seen in a while. So fun. Diane, I was just thinking about you this morning. Oh, here I am. There you are in that cute orange shirt. I love it. Are you are you up north? I am um, in Red Bluff and we're having guests over um, to have our dinner tonight. I I'm love it. To... There we are. There you go. How are you doing, dear? We're good. I'm very good. And I'm really excited because I'm not teaching today. So this is this is fun for me, too. Um, I want to shout out also some some other people. Always fun to see you, Joanna. Joanna, did I see you were just in San Francisco? Oh, yes, I was like in uh, May. It was so oh. cool. Oh, OK. Because you were just posting about it. Like, I know then. I did. I did my video, but it was just because it took me a little longer to actually get the video together. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. I was going to say you were in my hood and I think in Kitty's hood too, because so yeah, awesome. she's so also awesome. in San Francisco. Hey, good to see you as always. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So it looks like we have all sorts of people. Nikki, I haven't seen you in forever as well. You've been so busy with family stuff and summer stuff, I'm sure. Totally. Yeah. Lots of good stuff right now. Okay, fair. Well, good. I love to hear it. It's good to have you back. And we have a lot of exciting new faces in here today. Oh, and Vicky, I didn't say hey to Vicky. Another awesome member, as always, with her new knife. Oh, check it out, everyone. Vicky's got the the uh, Damascus knife that I use. I'm gonna grab mine so we can match. And uh, what yeah. kind of knife is it? So it's a Nakano knife. It's N A K A N O, and I can put it in the chat. Um, but this particular one is a Damascus blade. So it's a very particular blade and it works really well. It's my favorite, 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 favorite knife. And I get discounts on it. So let me put it in the chat and then you can check it out. Um, but we also have tons of new faces here, by the way. Tring, good to see ya. Did I say it right? Yes. Tring. Yes? Hello. Cool. Okay. Well, welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice um, yay. And then Laura and company. Laura, who's your partner in crime? Emily. Emily. All right. Great to see you guys. Thanks for coming. <laughs> awesome. And then Kim, nice to see you. Thank nice you for joining. <laughs> I love the red kitchen. That's super cool. And <laughs> I love, love, love it. Awesome. And then, oh, there's Andrew. Finally, you're coming. I'm so happy to have you here. You made it. Not too yeah. happy day today, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It's about time I was able to jump on, so. Yes, yes. Well, hopefully it's well worth it for you. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's yeah. great, great to see your face again, though. Thanks for coming. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then Danielle, awesome to see you. Thank you for joining. Hey, how are you? Great. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I also love your bright, bright, cheery kitchen. That's like <laughs> backdrop for it is yeah. literally the smallest kitchen in the world. I'm Me like, too. I'm 10 by 10 here, so I, I get it. 
my stuff is everywhere. You can't really, <laughs> it's just so small. It's an illusion. Who else is in that <laughs> same camp? I think a lot of people have their stuff everywhere, I'm sure. Oh, maybe not. Everyone <laughs> else is organized. All right. <laughs> Awesome. I'm trying. Well, I'm trying. This is my first online cooking class. So. Well, I think you'll find it easier than you would imagine. Uh, once you get, once you get in your groove, you know, so, um, oh, we have Erica in the house too. Welcome. Always great to see you. Are you still in Alaska? I am. Nice. Lucky duck. Looks <laughs> gorgeous. Except for it's always sunny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This year, not exactly, but you know, maybe oh. soon. Interesting. Very, oh, just cloudy. Hmm. All right. Well, so, um, you guys, before we dive in, I, we have guest chef Vanessa coming on and, uh, this is very special when she agreed to teach his class. I was pinching myself all over because Vanessa is a rock star. She is a superpower in, uh, San Francisco. She has quite a few different arms of her business. Um, she owns Culinary Artistas, which is this really cool space in Ghirardelli Square, where they host all sorts of cooking classes for adults and children, and they have children's camps in the summer and team building and all sorts of stuff. And I actually used to rent her space out before the pandemic, so that's how I got to know her. Um, but then she also has these really cool boxes, these kits that she sends you, and they're supposed to um, make it really easy to cook with with your kids. So if you have a family, it's awesome. And um, I could go on and on, but she's brilliant. And she's also Brazilian uh, originally and is going to be, yeah, Joanna, there you go. And she's going to be teaching us a, a very special recipe. So uh, with that, I'd love to invite Vanessa to come on up, say hi, and join us for Tiny Kitchen today for our cooking class. Here she comes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anya. Thank you. Hello, hello everybody. Um, it's always funny to be introduced like that. It's like it builds up your anxiety a little bit. It's like, oh my God, everybody's now it's gonna have a lot of expectations. But um it's hard to imagine started... you with anxiety, to be honest. <laughs> with all that you pressure. posted. <laughs> a little pressure is good. It's good. Um <laughs> I I don't see any kids in the kitchen right now. Do I? uh no I'll have, I, I, I just I'll have some started, coming they're just coming back from uh karate oh good amazing okay I was hoping for to see some some kids faces uh, I started uh, cooking as a kid I was a shy kid had a little bit of a hard time relating to my peers and the kitchen was my place of comfort to I always had a big appetite too so like I could get the first morsels and make things and uh, kind of get accolades from the grown-ups so that's kind of what got me going um, I had a um, almost a 20-year career in, um, in corporate America more like I moved to the U.S. right after college and uh, kind of got here in the Bay Area in the um, the, the beginnings of the internet um uh, world the dot com boom and the dot com fall and you know all of that and um it was only when I had my daughter 13 years ago that I said you know what I want to if I'm leaving home I'm going to leave home for something that uh I I believe in so for something that is connected to my purpose I also have always been a creative person and uh, I I tried to play music and it didn't work I tried to paint and it didn't work and I realized that my creative language is it's cooking it's in the kitchen and uh, so that was um, when I started to kind of look around what was what was going to do with that. Um, I had a degree in food engineering and a master's in holistic nutrition. I love the science and uh, the health element. And I thought, and I think I was so immersed in kid world that I thought that uh, teaching cooking to kids would kind of open the doors to this kind of experiential learning that uh, worked really well for me. So I started Culinary Artistas about seven years ago. And then two, three years ago, I started another company that's called Club Artistas. It's a subscription box for families and, and to start kids in the kitchen. What I realized is a lot of parents like to come to my school and drop off the kids because they don't have the ease in the kitchen to cook together. So it was just like creating structure and creating fun recipes and like connecting that to STEM, to art, to um, science and just as a way to kind of like really give a, a round 
uh, approach to that. So that's my infomercial, Club Artista, mm -hmm. that can go there. The link um, is in the chat, by the way. The so link is in the chat. Check it out. Yeah. But <laughs> tonight is really about, I, I'm really excited to teach this class. So this dish, and uh, maybe if you are shy, and I see both of you are on mute, so you can say it, and I'm not going to hear. But the way you say it, moqueca. So it's moqueca. The E is a E. Uh, and uh, moqueca. And uh, that was, actually, it was my second dish. The first one was beef stroganoff. I don't know why, but uh, that was like very small. But moqueca was the first dish that uh, I cooked for adults. Um, I clipped the recipe from the back of the Sunday paper, but because that was, you know, we're talking about early 80s. Uh, yeah, early, like maybe 81, 82. So there was no internet. And um, I love it because even in Brazil, it's kind of like, even though it's like one of like the real representative dishes of Brazilian cuisine is also considered a little bit fancy. It's not something that you make all the time, but you will see that it's really accessible. Uh, another thing about muqueca is is really uh, like the confluence, the conver convergence of the African, the indigenous, and the Portuguese cultures. Uh, just like I'll talk for three minutes and then we're going to get started. But I think that's nice to give you a little dimension. But uh, in Portuguese cuisine, uh, they make something called cozidos. And cozidos is really you would translate to stews. So it's this whole idea of like kind of you know, stewing vegetables, and mostly they would make with meat. When the Portuguese came to Brazil and they started to connect, you know, let's say, we're going to say positive today. We're going to say they start to connect with the, with the Brazilian, with the indigenous, and like even the, the climate, uh, the, the, the indigenous people cooked a lot of seafood and fish. So they started to use that technique of stewing meats, but it's stewing seafood. And then now you bring the enslaved people that uh, the Portuguese team uh, brought to us. And they kind of, I don't know how, but they were able to bring some of their traditional foods. So um, coconut is a big one that was is a big um, uh, legacy, you know, that they left for us. And um, uh, peppers, all the chilies came from Africa. And then this amazing ingredient that uh, maybe only a few of you or I don't know how many of you was able to get a hold of, but it's called dengue oil. Is the ah, no, I right. love it. It's the <laughs> red palm oil. So it's a beautiful, very tall those imperial uh, palm trees, and they have these little. It looks like little coconuts. But they're like this big, and uh, they have this very potent red oil that has a very characteristic uh, flavor and and color. So the moqueca kind of brings all those elements together. As most of the traditional dishes, it's a very lenient, it's a very forgiving dish. It's like, I love to do it. Like I, love, I like complicated, re complicated recipes that you have to be very picky about all the ingredients you have. But I also love recipes that uh, you can adapt to what you have. You don't have five tomatoes, you have four you go for it. You know, you don't have the palm oil, but you have tomato paste. You go for it. Today you're making uh, shrimp. Tomorrow you're making fish. Maybe you make the banana. It's um, it, Today we're going to try to follow the traditional recipe. So you have a baseline of what that, that, how it's kind of supposed to be. But I want you to then from that and like I want you to also ask as many questions as you want because then you're going to own that recipe and you'll see how delicious and how beautiful it looks. It's a really great recipe to entertain because I like the big one pot recipes. You know, you make a pot of rice and you make that and people were so impressed. It will, uh, it doesn't freeze well because of the seafood, but uh, it will taste good, you know, for another day or two. So that's another I, I like, you know, when I'm cooking at home, you don't want all, all the super fussy things, or maybe you want them every once in a while. But this is one that is kind of will impress without being kind of a big deal. Um, I think I'm going to go into the flow of the class unless anybody has a question before I start. 
Anyone? Okay. And the, um, the only thing I um, would just ask is like um, substitutions, like helping with substitutions uh, just yeah. with kids. Cause I have two little ones. So it's like, what are, what are my kids going to eat? Um, they do eat, uh, you know, everything that I cook, but sometimes I substitute out like the peppers or stuff or, um, yeah. and then add in, adding in extra veggies um, as well. So if you have ideas and okay. things that we can add in is super helpful. Happy to. Um, and uh, what's your first name? Nikki. Nikki. Okay, Nikki, if you, as I'm going through things, if you want to interrupt me and like, if there's specific things, you know, they don't like, but I'll keep that in mind. Um, also very important. I would say, well, before we start, I think you should pour a glass of whatever you like to drink when you are cooking. Because, there we go. Uh, we're celebrating. I'm, I, you know, I'm going to start with water. It's weird. I'm going to open some wine in a little bit, but, uh, Yesterday, I taught a class and I started with a margarita. It didn't go so well. So I'm <laughs> going to start hydrating, but uh, just, you know, have a glass of something that makes you feel good because uh, we're hanging out, you know, we're cooking and uh, this is, this is a, this, we're doing this from home, but it's a social event and that uh, we should, uh, I think the pleasure that we take as we make this goes into the food. I really believe that. So nobody's going to sweat like anything. So Vanessa, I was thinking about making a pisco sour. I thought that might mm. pair well. What do you think? Mm. Amazing, amazing! The, it the feels very tropical. And, yeah, it's all in the same latitude, right? Tropics, equator, like anything. I actually made a little agua de Jamaica right before, like uh, so. I ha I'm wow. uh, I'm steeping some hibiscus because I made mix with a little. I've been in a tequila kick. I know oh, yeah. it's Tuesday. Don't judge me, you guys. I I, I drink very moderately, <laughs> but uh, when I'm doing like, I also think it's a celebration. But I'm drinking cold water. <laughs> Joanna, um, did you have a question? Uh, yes. So my vende is a little bit expired. I'm not sure how long because I bought it like three years ago, and I have it. But I'm not sure if I should use this or if I should use something else because. Uh, I'm not sure. Like, okay, so uh, with the then the the worst thing that could happen is for it to rancify. You know, like, so do you know the smell and the taste of like rancid oil? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I would say put in a little spoon, smell it first. If you don't smell it rancid, take a little taste. It's very potent, right? So you just want to like a little drop, and if it's not smelling rancid or tasting rancid, you are okay. Okay. Mine, like this one is new, but I've had been there that lasted for a long time. And if you haven't been keeping in the fridge from now on, keep it in the fridge. Yeah, it was in the fridge. So it was fine. I think you're going to be fine. You, awesome. I, I really do. But smell it because you don't want to like at the very end, you made this beautiful dish and the very end you put the rancid oil in it and you spoil it. Right. And if you are not using the day, you guys, uh, I didn't say I, 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 mean, I would talk about the, the, the origin and the variations, but uh, most of Brazil does not use dendê. The, just where the birthplace of muqueca use dendê, but the the São Paulo muqueca and the Minas, it's all with the tomato sauce. So, like, if you're not doing dendê, you are still doing a, making a traditional muqueca. Okay? Thank you. Welcome. So, um, I'm for you, Vanessa. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Um, no is there a way to describe what dendê tastes like for those of us who don't have dendê? Is it like a pepper? Is it like spicy? Is it uh? Is it tomatoey? Is it? Um, it's not tomatoey. It's it's there is a sweetness. There is a nuttiness. Um, it's almost like I get a little paprika. It's okay. like um, do you wanna? Would you? What would you? It's it's like almost like it's it's giving me a sweet paprika vibe, but uh, spicy. Uh, like a like there's a little spice to it, but not a hot spice. No. Um, cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 That's great. Thank you. Super you're cool. I think we're yeah. all gonna be running to to buy it now. I put a link <laughs> in the chat for anyone who is now regretting not buying it. So yeah, it red palm oil. Um, that's how it's uh, like the American. Hey, Nikki, I see your young chef there. Hello. <laughs> Are you going to be cooking with us? Say hi. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Make sure you wash your hands. Get up. Oh, we have. Oh, my God. I see the cilantro a... plucker over there. 
Awesome. <laughs> Cilantro pucker. Perfect job. There we go. Uh, <laughs> you guys wash your hands and find a little counter surface for you two guys to work on. So we're going to be making three things. We're going to make the, the moqueta, which is this uh, stew that uh, today you have options. You can be using shrimp, you can be using shrimp and fish, or you can make it vegan with um, uh, plantains. I'm using a some shrimp and some plantains, like just my own variation. And then we're going to make some rice. Uh, just plain white rice with a little bit of coconut milk, and then we're gonna make something another another uh, indigenous uh, of indigenous origin or in, uh, how to say native Brazilian uh, origin uh, dish called farofa, and farofa is a little bit it's almost like a dressing like a dry dressing that we use to we use on everything we use on beans we use on like on stews and like it just kind of like thickens up and absorbs the flavor. So I chose to make a very sim simple farofa just for you guys to get the gist of it. Uh, farofas can be very like, uh, like you can add a lot of things to it, like depending on like how fancy you wanna make. Ours is gonna be really fancy, uh, very simple. Uh, what we're also gonna do, I don't know if you're, uh, probably most of you are uh, familiar with the concept of mise en place. And mise en place is putting everything in place. So we're going to chop all the ingredients that we're going to use for the three dishes. And then we're going to start making them. That way we don't go back. We don't go from the chopping board to the stove and back to the chopping board. I like to do the chopping work a little bit ahead of time. Uh, and then, um, yeah, and then we're going to get started. One more thing we're going to do ahead of time is we're going to try to the rice to be, uh, we're going to wash up the, the starch from that rice. So um, I think to start, what I would like you to do is the recipe says two, um, two cups of rice. Uh, it's up to you, like how for how many people you're cooking for. If you're cooking for two, I would just say just make one cup of rice. We're going to use one and a half times the amount of water. OK, so that's you, you can keep your um, um, your balance there. So I would say just measure your rice on a little bowl and cover it with cold water. And then um, let's set that aside. <clears throat> and Vanessa, why why again you're you're um, letting it sit just to absorb some of the starch of the rice? Yeah, so uh, just to save us time in terms of um, in terms of washing, right? Uh, because we we're gonna be doing other things. We would be rinsing this rice until what we wash off the starch. But if we just soak it for a little bit, the starch is gonna get on that water. And then when it rinse after, it's just gonna, like a lot of the starch is already gonna be used. So it's okay. important here to just use cold water, you know, just a room temp water. Um, Vanessa, I, of the yeah. I, I have a question. You don't see my face because my camera is not working, but um, <laughs> yeah. So um, I have basmati rice. Is that good? That's perfect. That is even better. I love basmati rice I, even more than jasmine rice. For and sure. also, um, well, it's almost nine o'clock where I am. So obviously we're not eating today. Should I just watch you make it? And make it tomorrow, or I can make rice ahead of time. Why don't you? Uh, why don't you do make everything except for the rice? Because uh, actually, is that Yelena? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yelena. Um, what are you planning to do? The mukeka with shrimp, with fish, or with the I have a shrimp and cod, Alaskan cod. Oh, okay. So planning. what I what I'm planning. gonna do. What I would you know, and this is a this is actually valid for everybody. So this what I what I would do for you is maybe you're gonna you can season um just put a a, a little bit. We're gonna season the fish and the seafood in a moment. So we're just gonna uh, put a little lime and salt in your fish, you know, in your in your shrimp, and then you put in the fridge, and that you're gonna go all the way uh, to when we are right before we put the fish because the fish is the last thing you put. And then don't yes. put it today. Tomorrow, you're going to bring it. it back to a boil, add your fish, and cook your rice. You just jumped my next question. You answered my next question, my, my would-be question. So I was going to make sauce and everything 
but fish and shrimp at tomorrow. Yeah, you add tomorrow and you're going to be at, at, at an advantage because the sauce is going to taste amazing tomorrow. You know, mm -hmm. like how some sauces, they really taste better the next day, but, yeah. uh, but it's better to, like, don't add, you don't need to add the seafood today. Mm -hmm. So um, following Elena's um, uh, lead here, let's, uh, let's get the protein that you are using. So get your fish or your shrimp. Mm -hmm. um and, or the or the plantains okay uh i am and we're gonna season that so i didn't want to i've been kind of a, practicing a little bit of restraint on my animal proteins but i wanted to just get some of these prawns uh just to i don't know how many of you had uh prawns that had um the Kale and uh, <clears throat> and the shell to it. So I got a few that have like the tail and the shell, just to show you how to clean that. Um, if you are doing fish, what I would do is um, pat your fillets of fish dry right now, and then you want to slice. Uh, at about I would say I don't know if two inch if this is two inches or an inch, but uh, just this this width like two finger width okay and then you're gonna put in a bowl because we're gonna season that the same thing with if your if your shrimp is deveined and uh you know de-shelled just yeah. do it otherwise you're gonna follow me and um just de um take the shell off my daughter is very particular if she sees any of the veins any of the the poop stuff she will not touch it did you say so, cut up the, sh the fish to two inches each yeah i did you're gonna you're gonna cut it into like uh, two inches or two finger width stripe just lay your fillet and like just um and if you have a question about that just show me your fillet and i'll i will explain to you what you're doing do you lay the tail on the shrimp or no I think it all out. Uh, I think it's pretty to like, there is a visual effect to leave the whole thing, but then you're making your eater uh, pick through it and uh, the sauce is really rich. So in this case, I think you will, you know, your, your eaters will be happier if the shrimp is ready to go. Okay. And do you leave the skin on the fish? Uh, skin on the fish. Yes. And I have like big pieces. Should I cut this in half? Yeah, what I was saying is like you wanna cut them into stripes that are like two finger uh two finger wide. That so that piece you would cut into like four pieces. Oh okay. Yeah. And then I'm gonna show you guys the I don't know, this did anybody get plantains? You did. Okay. So I did uh, because I got it all. <laughs> beautiful. You go, Diana. I did the okay. same, Diana. I didn't. No, I didn't know we were going to miss out on it. I didn't know it was an option, so I got it all. So I'm going to put all the fish and shrimp and maybe part of the plantain, but we'll talk about it. If the sauce will cover it. Well, and when you. As I, so what I, before, what I told you, Elena, was that um, if you're this uh, enough that you were trying to have some tomorrow, I would say maybe you hold like the fish doesn't doesn't it's not great to for the other day. Uh, so just use your shrimp and your bananas. If you're intending to eat it all tonight, then definitely put everything or you put everything and when you serve tonight, you serve the fish first. And if there is anything left over, you'll be your plantains and shrimp that will warm up just perfectly tonight. I have a whole dance with my leftovers. I am a, an adept of leftovers, but I always like, they always a little bit different the next day. So you, you're not eating exactly the same thing, but uh, you're also not doing the work of cooking it all again. But and there's things this, that are- yes? are you doing your shrimp? This fish so, should be- uh, My yeah. shrimp is pretty big and it wasn't deveined, right? So I'm just cutting off the tail. And then removing the skin, and then I'm gonna get close to the to the camera to show you. 
do you um do you is there any way to remove bones from the fish or you just do that while you're eating um so you know I'll say Erica I'm not like an expert on like deboning fish but um you know with depending on the fillet depending on the fish like the bones are kind of concentrated like they have you know they're in a line so um, if you can get them out, just because it's this is going to be in a big stew. So while we're doing that, if you can pull some of the bones, that's great. If they're all big bones, it's really not a big problem. That's how you would eat in Brazil. It would still be bones, yeah. some bones okay. left in the fish. Yeah. So cool. I was just saying that I just use a little paring knife and I just cut through the top of the shrimp. So I can just pull that whole you know, nasty thing out. <laughs> and then I, I, I don't like to use the word nasty in the kitchen. I don't think anything is nasty. It's just I don't this this is this is feels a little bit nasty to me. So, so I yeah. have a question about my fish, the size of my fish. Okay. I feel like maybe it could be too big it, to cook through. So it's uh here, here's my palm here's my fingers and it's that big. Uh, that's gorgeous. Why don't you cut that into in a half? Okay, great. That's what I yeah, and then uh, and because that each one of those halves is gonna be perfect for one person, right? That's gonna be a nice, beautiful piece of fish that is gonna go with the stew. Right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And I love all the questions. If um, I think um, even for anyone that is that didn't ask the question, that's a sometimes like it's a good thing to know because that will come up. Um. Okay. So here are my plantains. They are nice and, and uh, ripe. Um, I don't know how many of you are super proficient uh, in buying plantains. Uh, it's a little bit like for the first time you're buying them, you're like, is it really good? It looks like it's going bad. But I like sometimes like the darker, the mushier, the better, right? They like they're yeah. sweeter. And um, if it's, it's a little bit like if it's not all the way dark through, it's not a problem because we're going to cook this through and it's going to soften. But if you're ever like trying to fry plantains or to bake plantains, go for the ones that almost look they're, they're about to be rotten. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to... Um, Peel my plantains and, um, uh, you know, I won't uh, season, well, you can you can season them all together. The only thing I will say is that uh, we are going to put the fish and the shrimp way after the plantains, okay? So if you are putting them all together, just don't pile it all up so you don't have to go digging. Uh, just, you know, put them in a bowl and separate. And again... I am cutting them on like a two finger width, it's, just slicing it. Oh, my if not. we had like the green raw looking plantains, should we just leave those out? Yeah. No, no. So here's what's going to happen. If you have a green looking plantain, you are going to, uh, you're going to, I will tell you when you're going to put it. You're going to put the, your plantain to cook kind of like right after the tomatoes. Um, and the consistency of your plantain is going to be more like um, a potato that is cooked through, but it still keeps the shape, you okay. know. And if you have a very ripe plantain, then it's going to be a lot more, a lot softer. But uh, green plantains are perfectly fine to be um, to be consumed as well. Uh, actually, some dishes ask for the green plantain. Vanessa, is there ever a point where your plantains are too ripe? They just, um, I mean, I'm sure there is, but like, how do you tell? Because I know you're looking for it to be really dark. Yeah. So um, for me, the when it's too ripe and when I see mold on the outside. <laughs> okay. If they look molded, then the mold, it's not like the mold is not going to kill you, but it's going to transfer the flavor to the to the flesh of the plantain. Cool. So, um, you you know, then you, I, I, there's two flavors I can I can taste from very far is mold mold stuff and rancid stuff. It's like I can't. Oh, what about? Does anybody can taste like like stuff that have been in the freezer? You know that freezer taste. 
Oh, I yeah. hated that. If I go to a restaurant and like I can tell, like, my boyfriend always wants to hide under the table because I'm like I'm gonna. This tastes like a fridge. It's like I'm complaining. All right, so I use two plantains and I think five or six um, prawns. Now we're gonna season that with um, a little bit of like not a little bit like a, a he healthy amount of salt. Uh, lime and pepper. I'm sorry, how did you cut your plantains again? Yeah, um, you peel them and right. then you slice in like two finger with two finger. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so um, this might be very, very basic, but um, you know, in my experience, the teaching it, a lot of people don't know, but um, I love to give my hand a little massage here when I'm before I cut any citrus. I roll it on the on the board. Oh, the what happens is that breaks the um, the cell wall of all the little cells of juice, and then like it just liberates a lot of the juice. I also I, I heard that a lot of people there have small kitchens. So um, I have a big kitchen, but I'm not a big kitchen gadget person. So the, what I, I like to use as little gadgets as possible. So my way to, to squeeze a citrus is using a fork. Uh, actually, I'm going to put the salt first. You guys, um, salt in your food is your gateway to success, okay? Uh, you want to use the most natural salt you can because it has a great balance of minerals. And uh, you want to use, you want to be cooking food that is really rich in, also in minerals. So you have a balance. So the sodium is not like way off balance with everything else. But you can, you will never salt your food so much as much as you are in a restaurant. But I think home cooks, sometimes like they're afraid of salt and fat. And they don't salt things enough, and then it doesn't taste so good. So I'm getting like a thing, a five finger salt uh, pinch, and I use kosher salt, which is less salty than table salt. So is this uh, just so I, plantains or for the fish too? This I'm um, I'm I have my fish and the plantains all in one bowl. Oh. Yeah, I'm just, um, the other thing about being, you know, in a restaurant, you have someone that all they do is uh, wash dishes. At home, it's either us or our significant others or our kids. We will resent us if we make a big mess, right? So I try to not use too many bowls, too many things. So everything's going to be in one bowl. Then I kind of like um, stab the, the lemon, the lime in the middle here with the fork. And as I squeeze, I turn the fork. And then this you got to get all right? oh. this. Oh, sorry. A uh, lime, a uh, lime. If you don't have limes and you're using lemon, that's not how we do in Brazil, but it's going to still taste delicious. So that's a place, uh, Nikki, that, uh, that's an easy sub for you. Limes or lemons. Lime, uh, limes are preferred here, but. Do you, you prefer black or white pepper? Uh, good point. Um, I would mix both here. Black pepper is just more common, but the um, you know think of like this is a Portuguese and African dish. It's like all pepper is welcome. So um, we actually I'm only gonna use half the lime here because I have very little. If you want to use your whole lime, you're fine. I'm gonna we're gonna need lime in the in the dish as well. So good. We. We have nailed the prep for two things here now. That's really good. Because <clears throat> very soon we're gonna get into the chopping and the plucking. And uh, I went to my young chefs, if they're still there, that's when you're gonna start working. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm putting things here so you guys can see my surface, but um, <laughs> all right. Beautiful. Vanessa, random question, yes. but have you have you ever heard the the saying that um limes you should only squeeze once and then you only get one good squeeze out of the limes. After that they're no good. 
Supposedly it's a Peruvian thing, but I'm just curious if you've heard of it. You know, limes are funny. I haven't heard that, but I, I kind of feel I agree. So I, I was just, I, I think I'm, um, I'm starting to show my true self here. I'm like, I'm not picky, but now I'm going to tell you one more thing about me. <laughs> I also can tell when the lime has been squeezed a long time ago. You know, like how limes, they're so, like, after a while, they get bitter. And what happens is, is the pith is very bitter, right? So once you squeeze the lime and you got like that, that pith activated, you just got to do that once. And then like, it's going to bitter up. So I never heard that, but uh, I, it makes sense to me. I, was I love that you I, know I, that. I was just going to say, I love that. Yeah, go ahead. Go what ahead. Go ahead. You no, go for um, it. I, I thought I taught a cocktail class yesterday and um, I was saying that if you go to a bar and uh, you know you're gonna get a, a cocktail and then you're like you were you kind of wondering like should I get the well spirit or should I get like you know the fancier spirit you ask them like you, you want to see the juice if they are juicing that that you know or that fresh juice then it's worth it upgrading your your spirit if they're using that juice that sat there the whole day just go with the well spirit because it's all going to taste the same. Yes. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. Money. That's... Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fresh or bust. Okay. Um, everybody, are you caught up? Can you give me a thumbs up if we can move on to some chopping? Gorgeous. All right. So um, <clears throat> let's, start, mm -hmm. um, let's start with the bell peppers because I love to teach uh, people who haven't done this um, this technique um so we are um here's how i cut bell peppers you guys and i maybe you can look and then you can do yours first yours after so um we're gonna use the top and the bottom we're not gonna waste don't worry but uh i cut off the top uh, and put it here and cut off the bottom and put it there so now you when you see this then you can come in with a a smaller knife or even your chef knife and make a slit right by one of the ribs okay and then you're going to start opening it and then you slide the knife in there and you cut right where the rib is and you keep on unfurling and unfurling Did you cut and the before you too? know you have this beautiful kind of like filet of a pepper <laughs> And all, um, all your other stuff is, um, is out. Something I, I meant to say before, but I also would like to keep a little bowl right on the table. Two things, uh, keeping a, a rolled up towel to like wipe as you go and keep a bowl there so you can get all your compost and then you throw away so you don't have to be walking back and forth. So now that I have this nice, plain, easy to cut, uh, we can kind of cut into three pieces. I'm going to um, pile it here, and then I'm going to baton it. And uh, baton means I, I just have little little sticks. Um, oh, wait a minute. You cut it three ways long way? Or the yeah, I just top? cut three ways long way to make it easy. Wait, bottom to top and or then, side to uh, side? I'm not uh, sure. Top I'm to bottom, do it side again. To side. Okay. I'm gonna do it again. So um, I cut the top off. Okay, and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna use this after. So we put it on the side. The stem gets away. So I'm also gonna cut the bottom off. So now uh, you can see through, and you can see the seeds and the ribs, right? right? And then you get your knife right by when one of the ribs is. And you cut from top to bottom. Now you're going to start opening it and furling it and just cutting off the rib and furl a little, little bit more. Cut off the rib. So what you have then is like a flat piece of bell pepper. Then, then I'm going to cut across top to bottom. Okay, top to bottom. Pieces, okay, that's different. And then All you right. can pile them and then chop. So you kind of do a matchstick? 
Yeah, so, uh, a little. Yeah, kind of a max six. You can be a little bit thicker, like not not as as thin. And you guys, and this is where your personal touch starts. Um, I will say, you know, you don't want to make it too thick, but uh, some people like, like to make it really delicate. Some people will make it a little bit more rustic. Some people will swear by having the the bell pepper rings. Uh, there are recipes, actually the first recipe of mukeka I was telling you when I was 10 that I made, you would, um, that is a very African way of doing, you would blend the tomatoes and the bell pepper. So it's like a smooth sauce. Um, but this way is uh, with the, the pieces of pepper and, the, and onions and uh, tomatoes is the more traditional way. Can you So use... now we get Yeah. Oh, I was just going to ask, can we do orange bell pepper? Is there it has a different flavor? Absolutely. Bell pepper. Okay. It's perfect. No problem. Um so back to your I... pepper. How, how how thick are the pieces? Half inch? Tell me again. The pepper. Uh, half... the, the pieces are um do I have let me look. Just for cooking purposes, I'm trying to get the size right. Yeah, they're about like um, uh, wait, this is an inch, a quarter inch. Okay, yes. all right. And then I'm making sure that I'm slicing the that bottom and top, so we don't have any waste here. My battery. And um, I'm a firm proponent of snacking on the food as you go. I know that it maybe spoil your appetite, but if you feel like biting, are you cutting up the other French pepper? Bell pepper? Say it again. Oh, you're cutting up the other pepper. I am. So we're gonna we're gonna cut both peppers. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to. To just set them aside is no problem to mix them okay the bell peppers can be mixed up okay all right looking good okay vanessa um, i love the mixture of the two peppers it's so no. I, you know green isn't used enough and it's just so fun when you throw in green because it's such a different flavor so I it love is it. and um yeah, that's a good point. Uh, traditionally, you always, you will have a green pepper uh, on the muqueca. Um, you will um, or you won't? You will, you will. Oh, cool. Good. Like some people, you know, um, I mean, the red is desirable, but, um, you know, I do the whole thing, but the, 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 the green does have um, a little bit of a different flavor. Okay, so um, maybe the next thing we can do is our tomatoes. And um, for the tomatoes, we're going to use the seed, the peel, everything, okay? And uh, we want all as much juice as we can um, gather because um, that's what's going to make the sauce. <clears throat> uh, I, would, I would say it's nice to... Because we want to like sauce it up and like kind of fast, so chopping it, you know, like a, a smaller chop is is desirable. So I have Roma tomatoes. Any kind of tomatoes really is work here, and um, so I'm just gonna half them. And you guys all seem like proficient cooks, but uh, just doesn't hurt to say I always like to have a to have my vegetable and a like make a flat surface for it to rest. It makes all the, the, the chopping easier. So I just have, and now I'm chopping it. Uh, I know, uh, Anya, you might have a, you might have a thought on this. I know that um, the skin of the peppers and tomatoes is not great for the knife. So I think ideally you would chop, chop from the wet side, but uh, do you have, um, how do you do it? I usually do it, uh, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, I keep my knife super sharp so that it's not a problem, but if I'm chopping okay. tomatoes and my knife isn't sharp, I grab a serrated knife 
And then I find that if oh, I put huh. it flat, yeah, the way you had it works great with a serrated knife. So. Okay. Okay. That's a good, that's a good tip. Yeah. My knife is sharp too, but I know that, a, you know, a lot of people at home yeah, definitely. don't. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, I say, you guys, um, having a wet, um, I have um, a wet stone. You really, it's like, it's a cheap thing to buy. It's, um, and it's easy to sharpen your knife at home and at least like to keep it sharp. And then, you know, maybe a couple times a year, or once a year, you take a professional. It makes all the difference when you're cooking. I think uh, keeping your knife sharp is pretty good. Yeah. And these days they have so many, uh, just super easy home sharpeners that you can buy for your knife and it, you know, mm. you, you buy it so that it pairs with your knife. So the angle of your blade, oh. depends on where, you know, the angles of the blades change depending on where you get them. And so when you buy that perfect pairing, it's supposed to make it last forever. So. Oh, yeah. cool. Okay. I, I'm see, I'm not as on top of that well you're you're traditional chef you use the wet wet stone <laughs> yeah. you know how to use it it's not intimidating for you so <laughs> yeah you know? yeah but for some people it's very intimidating so yeah, yeah. i'm using my new nakano it's very you are it's yeah. really Ooh. nice it's amazing Show us. we gotta see it i'm using this one but there's there was a set of four and um highly recommend they're very sharp i mean obviously they came that way but um and it comes it came with a sharpener too, actually. Yeah, I love mine. Yeah, <laughs> different color, but hey, cool. Yeah, so nice. I'm so glad. I'm glad you guys are hooked up now. These are these amazing knives that I discovered um, a year or so ago, Vanessa, and I decided uh -huh. to partner with them because I love the knives so much, and I fight my husband. Oh, good. <laughs> we good. fight yeah, over that's it. A, yeah, having the right knife makes a big difference. I um. Yeah, I love my knife too. As I have, I also have a Japanese knife. Um, yeah, Japanese is where it's at. I'm a big fan of Japanese. Yeah, yeah, me too. I um, I just got it a couple years ago, but uh, I love it. Um, Always worth but the this investment. This is uh, this is a, it's a, it's an aluminum core. So you, I have to keep it dry. I like otherwise, uh, it's um, yeah. But um, it works for me. And nobody, I don't let anybody use it at home. <laughs> yeah, that's only fair. mine. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, let's, you know, I'm going to leave the onions less because um, otherwise we're going to be crying here. So let's chop some garlic. Um, Woohoo. Since um, one, as we talk about chopping, and we don't need to do that today, but I have... Uh, Kind of like a recent trick is um, if I need my garlic to be really fine, almost pasted, instead of like using a garlic press, like I hate them, I hate cleaning them, I just microplane my garlic. Uh, so that's uh, that's kind of like a new trick for me. It works really well. But today we don't need to go what that is fine. What is a microplane? Yes. Yeah. A microplane is a zester. So are those things that they come straight out of like woodwork shop, right? Uh, and uh, it's like, you know, in the old days, we would use the grater and grater is so good for some things. But if you are, um, if you're working with ginger or zesting uh, citrus, having like a microplane is really, is really good. And Even uh, you Parmesan can also cheese do that. is great. We use it for yes. a lot of teas because it's light and fluffy. Yeah. And I'll put mm -hmm. I'll put a microplane in the chat because that is a must in the kitchen. Once you have it, yeah. you never go back. Yeah, no, you never go back. And like, uh, it's a whole other world. I agree. Um, it's how I also hide a lot of veggies in my kid food. Mm. My kids <laughs> don't know because like I, you can microplane zucchini in and stuff like that. Uh -huh. And it's it's hidden in a lot of my baked goods, my, even my rice and, you know, mashed potatoes. Uh, but you can microplane a lot of veggies. Uh -huh. I just, I thought it was um, just a, you know, I can use this, but <laughs> it's not, it probably doesn't work the same thing. <laughs> no, it is, you know, it's, it does make a difference. Um, you guys, I'm doing more than four gar uh, heads of garlic because I'm using some garlic uh, that I, what, did you say four heads of garlic? 
I think four four is great. Four uh, uh four, four cloves, cloves of garlic. I think that's why I was in the recipe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, again, if you are like one of those people that love garlic, uh, by all means, use more. That would be me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the more the merrier. I, I think. Our, yeah, garlic is so good. So good. Except for then we we stink later on. Well, you gotta love, <laughs> learn to love the garlic smell, and then you don't stink. <laughs> yeah, <it's> true. <laughs> um, All right, microplane is in the chat for anyone who wants to put fourteen dollars big investment into their kitchen. It's worth it. Yeah, um, I like to add garlic to my salad dressing. And, but I don't like to bite on a piece of raw garlic in my salad. So microplaning it is where it's at. Oh, yeah. That is actually the first time I used microplane with garlic, Vanessa, was in a salad dressing. My grandma did that. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, you're so brilliant because it adds a whole new level to your, your salad dressing. But, yeah, there's no stress about biting into a big chunk by accident. Yeah, I also just learned to make um, a nistoise salad dressing Ooh. that uh, you use a shallot, and I microplane the shallot, and it was so good. Oh yeah, that's so smart. Yeah, shallot. So the flat. garlic, we're, the garlic, we're just mincing it. We well, yeah, we're just mincing yeah, it, uh, chopping it small. Okay. Are we putting it in a bowl? We are gonna. Uh, sorry, we're gonna keep the garlic uh separate from the rest of the things, okay? And you said the we're tomatoes gonna... should be chopped pretty small, right? To make like a sauce it's, almost. It's smallish, but not like you know, nothing too crazy. Like uh, I don't know here. It's just like not big, big piece of okay. tomato, only Perfect. because you want this tomato to dissolve, and if you have oh. big pieces, it's gonna take longer. Yeah. We're trying to be somewhat um, just efficient. So in on the first page of the recipe, it says a blender to puree the sauce, but that's not in the direction. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. I didn't, I didn't know that that recipe said that. So here you guys, you have a choice. Okay. Uh, some some mukepas have remember I was saying before and I I'm sorry I, I should have read the whole thing through some mukepas you do uh, blend the sauce after you cook it and then it's like a smooth sauce and some mukepas you will have the pieces of veggie so it's up to you we're going to as soon as we're we're cutting the um, the onions we're gonna get started in the stove with the onions and the tomato so our tomatoes are gonna get really tasty. Uh, so up to you and, um, oh, thanks to who, who, um, it's, it's who kitty. reminded us, is that kitty? Yep. Can you just tell us when to do that? If we want to do it? I will. I will. Fabulous. Thank For you sure. so much. Of course. Um, okay. Is okay. Beautiful. So last thing we're going to do is an onion. I am going to do a whole onion for this because. I do like the onion will bring a lot of flavor. And uh, because I'm not pureeing it and I don't want a big, big um, rings of onion, I'm also going to chop the onion the same size as I chopped the tomatoes. Um, for the, uh, we're going to actually go ahead and uh, we're going to chop two onions because we're going to use onions in the, in the farofa. And we're gonna use onions in the mukeka, okay? So, um, so, so it did call for one one medium onion and one small. So exactly. I have a yellow onion, and then I have a small yellow or a small white. Should I mix it up or stay with the yellow? Um, you are totally fine with uh with either. Like you can use you can mix them up or you can uh yeah I yeah um and if you have like I have two both my I think I have both my onions are kind of big, so and I have a quarter of a red onion, so I'm making one, one onion, one big onion, and one, one quarter, and then I'll mix them up and divide it up. Okay, thank you. Um, you're welcome. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, does everybody have their own way of uh, uh, slicing, chopping their onion, or do you want me to tell how I do it? Um, does anybody have a great way they want to share? I'd love your I'll way. Let you guys... uh, I just, um, I am not like, oh my God, I have the best technique in the world. I just cut my onion in half, pull the, pull the thick skin. Usually what I, I would do is, and I'll do that now, I like to collect my onion skins, like the ends, like of carrots, all things that would go in the broth, even like the garlic skin. I have um, I have a bag in the freezer, so I like I have like the piece of my fennel, the tops of my leek, and then this onion skins. And like once this bag fills up, I just throw it in a pot uh, with some carrots. Some water I boil and I make a, a vegetable broth or I will like I just um roasted the chicken and I save the bones and then I add the bones and I make a little stock so that's a good way to really use up everything that's but, gonna be our you know, weekly challenge guys we have we've we've grown uh green onions in our kitchen from the leftovers we've done all sorts of stuff that's the weekly challenge is see you next week who uh who makes homemade broth from their leftovers, all right? I challenge you. I'll be really yeah. excited to find out. You know that on I made it today from leftover yeah. turkey bones. You ah. told us that one time, or somebody in one of the classes said to do it. I've been doing it ever since, and it's the best, the best idea. Yes. Yes. That's amazing. Nikki, I'm so impressed you're taking the time to do that. It's super cool. Well, I've always made uh, broths out of my, like, chicken, because my kids, you know, I tend to, like, have a whole chicken. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, or I'll save all the bones in the freezer. And I, so I just make broth, yeah. this thing, but I never thought of adding the, all these veggie pieces. It was just the best idea. The broth is totally mm -hmm. different. I just make it all in mm -hmm. one every week. That's incredible. Yeah. Mm. Good idea. And then to add yeah, to that, you can, you can um, cook it down. So once you make your broth, you can let it steam for a while and then put it into ice cubes. And then it becomes like a condensed bouillon. Another yeah, idea. the tops and the tops of a carrot is great. Uh, yeah, I love I love to. Did you say the garlic skins? Garlic skins for sure. The ends of the garlic and the garlic skin. Okay, uh, that's a, that one I haven't done. Yeah, okay. I I just throw everything in there. Beautiful. Love it. The onion. I'm gonna move a little fast just because I. Great. You want it chopped, right? Yeah, we're going to chop it. Beautiful. You guys, everything is going to come together really fast. I know we're taking, you know, a lot of our time is going through the ingredients, uh, the, the mise en place, but um, that's cooking for you. <laughs> Everyone came full of questions too, so. I love it. I yeah. love questions. It's awesome. I'm proud of you guys. <laughs> Diving in. This is, uh, I do a lot of these uh, with corporate teams, but you know, people are still kind of like in a work environment. I must say, this is so cool. Everybody's actually cooking for their families at home. I love it, Anya. They just want to be here wholeheartedly yeah, I know yeah. I know I agree and you know there love it th what, I, what I love too is that you know we're we are building a community we're seeing uh you know faces that we recognize and saying hi and whatnot but also mm -hmm. all these people are taking all of you guys are taking your time out of your busy day to treat mm -hmm. yourself here you know you're coming in and and making something and there, I can't tell you how many people tell me they don't have time to cook and they don't have to you know to me it's telling me like you don't have time to take care of yourself. This is the greatest way to take care of yourself. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah, yeah. but good. Really, I'm glad you enjoy this. For me, so I'm excited that I'm going to have food ready for him when he gets home. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Exactly. <laughs> Question: Are you are you prepping the farofa onion as well, or are you going to cut that onion up later? Um, I am prepping the 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 farofa, the onion. Oh, okay, the and I'll cut another onion. <laughs> So let me, um, I'm going to go through the recipe and say, so the farofa is one small onion, 
the and then uh, the moqueca is one medium onion so i got i had a, a half and a, and a large one that i'm gonna divide up For and context, then Vanessa um, usually doesn't read recipes on this she just knows it by heart <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. And like, that's why, um, and I, Ani and I were talking about this a little earlier because I was like, well, actually we can do the herb after, uh, because I don't usually use recipes, but I wanted to like lightly follow. So you guys can follow along too. Um, and I have the a, only and then, thing we're going to have oh. to, sorry, the only thing we're going to have to chop at the end is the, the herbs, which I like to chop like right at the very end. So I think we're very good. Uh, did everybody get uh, a pepper, a bonnet pepper, um, a bird's eye, or um, I got a jalapeno just to, to make it accessible to everybody here. And uh, let's uh, let's slice that up. I'm um I'm just not gonna play with it. Like I don't know. Sometimes my daughter will go for hot stuff. Sometimes she won't. So I'm just gonna de seed my jalapeno to make sure that I get the flavor, but no heat. Can I, um, and, oh, sorry. Is it yeah. possible, Vanessa? I am not a fan of like crunchy onions or crunchy bell peppers. So I like to let my stuff like simmer for a longer. Is it possible to start cooking my onions or bell peppers? Yeah, we're going to all do that. And this dish is, there's no, you don't want to have anything crunchy. Everything needs to be really soft. So oh. yeah, if you are, if you are done with your chopping, go ahead then we're gonna move on to the stove i also want it to be done here so i can like i can be on the stove and guiding you guys so um now we're really done with that so um i wanted to show you so a traditional pot to make moqueca is a a, a clay pot and that's definitely of an indigenous um origin uh these clay pots this one i'm not gonna use it because it's my mom made for me and I'm afraid of breaking it. So I just have this like decorative, but that's what we would, would be using. Uh, any heavy pot, um, if you guys can see my hand here, my um, my stove camera, any heavy pot will do really well. So we're just going to, oh, we're just gonna start cooking now. So I'm gonna Could actually you look at the recipes. Chilies? Tell me again. Did you chop up the chili? I did. I chopped up my chili. Okay. Cool. Right. Now go ahead and do that. So I was saying that if you want it to be less hot, just go ahead and remove the seed. If you want the heat, uh, you can leave the seed on. Um, okay. So. I have a question about the rice. Yeah. If we use a rice cooker... Um, should I start that now? And then how much of like the coconut, is it coconut cream or coconut milk that we put in it? Um, it's um, either, either way, either one will be, uh, will be okay. I would, um, I would substitute the amount. So depends on how coconutty and creamy you want your rice. Okay. Uh, I think we are saying here that uh, um, two cups, you see this, this is gonna be this rice we have here is a pretty creamy rice because we're using 400 milliliters and a cup and a half of water to two cups but um you would oh. substitute so i like to use one and a half the amount the volume of rice for mm. uh in in liquid right so here we would have been using three and a half cups of water so if you want to use and a cup is um a cup is 250 ml. So actually oh, it's so the same. So here we're using half the amount of coconut, half the amount of water. Um, it doesn't make sense. So I, I feel I'm rambling. No, it's so is it like coconut water or coconut water milk? Coconut milk. Coconut milk. I'm sorry. Uh, coconut milk and water. It's like, so okay. yes, what you have is right. And uh, what I'm not seeing on the Mukeka recipe, you guys, is Prawns, fish, lime vinde, medium yellow onion, hot chili pepper. Um, I'm gonna, I'm going to do something different here. Okay, I'm not gonna fry my tomatoes and everything in in the uh, red palm oil yet. 
I'm going to add that a little bit later. So we have a little bit more control of the amount. So I want you to use two tablespoons of um, whatever oil you use to, uh, to saute. So it could be olive oil, grape seed, vegetable oil. Uh, it doesn't really, it's not a big deal here. I'm measuring just for you guys because usually I also don't measure. I'm being a good girl. All right, and then we're gonna start with adding two thirds of that those onions, okay? And sorry, I missed this, but it was the whole can of coconut milk, right? Like 16 ounces? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so... Um, Wait, sorry, I missed this step. What's in the pot? <laughs> Tell me, uh, tell me again your question. I just miss it was just olive oil and then half the onions in the pot. Yeah, so uh, right now we we chopped a, a medium and a small onion or yep. a certain amount of onion. You're gonna use two thirds of the onion for the mukeka, and we're gonna uh, say, uh, save one third for the farofa. And then you're gonna add two tablespoons of um, your oil of choice. And we're going to saute that onion until it becomes translucent. And then we're going to add the tomatoes. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry about that. You're welcome. When you're in a food show, you're not giving your, your, your back to one of the cameras. This is a really weird thing for me, but... Uh... <laughs> We're at home. <laughs> you guys, I'm almost ready to open a bottle of wine. I think uh, <laughs> we moved to the stove. You deserve it. Oh, yeah. We all deserve it. So, so a high I flame think... or a low flame? <laughs> Sorry, so when we, start, when we start the pot, do we... Um... Sorry, I like was not paying attention the last couple of seconds. <laughs> no problem. So you're gonna you're gonna uh, turn the heat, add two tablespoons of oil, and then when you see that the oil has uh, has heated up, you're gonna put two thirds of your onion, and then you have a medium heat, and you're gonna uh, cook until it's translucent. Okay. And once that is translucent, you add the tomato. Okay, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Did I have another question? No, oh, that was my question too. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Okay. Did you start cooking the rice yet? No, I didn't because the rice is going to be really quick. So uh, I want and that to, um, who was to, now I forgot to whose point that uh, uh, they like their tomatoes and the peppers to be really soft. That was nice. So, yeah. yeah, so uh, Nikki, so we're gonna get the tomatoes going and then uh, and the peppers, and then we're gonna move on to the rice and then last to the farofa. Uh, just I'm trying to time things in a way they all come come together. And I think you guys, you know, I I think the people get of the things that intimidate people like in the kitchen. For me, the one that is kind of the most essential and that oh, that you have to do with practice is the timing of things, right? How do you time, uh, like if you're making more than one thing, so things come um, together, come ready together. Um, actually, before we do the tomatoes, I would like you to add the garlic, okay? So the onions are translucent or are starting to be translucent. Let's add, add our garlic and uh, give another minute or so. And then we're going to add the tomato. So I have a question since I'm having a dinner party with this food. What, yeah. what do you serve with it other than the rice and the stew? Do you have a side dish? Well, we're making the farofa. Are you making the farofa with us? Yes. Yes. So, and then in Brazil, what we would do is if you, um, you would just have, if you wanted to have a salad, you would have a very, basic green salad That's to start. like start. either just lettuce or just arugula or just spinach you know and like very simple if you want to add some cucumbers but um the dish already carries a lot of flavor okay thank you That's what I did. you're welcome 
All right. So this is beautiful. There's a little bit of caramelizing, like a little goldening of my onions. The garlic is not, um, you know, one important thing, you guys, you never want your garlic to go beyond like a, a brown, like a golden color because it starts to get bitter. Okay. So I'm going to add tomatoes. And then I'm going to cover. So we're going to let uh, those tomatoes, what we say is that we're going to let them sweat. And um, right now I am at like medium heat. Okay. Just let, leave them there. After the tomatoes, we're going to add the peppers and the banana, but we're not there yet. So this is a good time for us to take a deep breath, <laughs> uh, replenish your drink, your water, whatever you're drinking. Uh, and then we're going to start tackling our rice. Vanessa, you're killing it. You're doing awesome. This is really fun. I'm learning a ton too. So. I like that Yay, you're, getting, you're getting all our questions as we're battering you with them. <laughs> yeah, I exactly. love it. You you give it to me. Do we already have the oil in the tomato oil? I mean the paste or do we already, did I miss that? Uh, so if you're gonna um, I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Uh, if you if you're using tomato paste, um, as soon as we are done with like sweating the tomatoes a little bit, we're gonna add the paste. We're okay. we're well, almost there. Um, I think Nikki asked about uh, vegetables. So traditionally, that's what you use. But you know, something I was just thinking that in the summer that would be fun would be to have some like corn on the cob and uh, again, cut the corn into slices and add pieces of corn. You could add um, definitely something that it would be on the Brazilian side is like some um, pumpkin. Or, uh, or a butternut squash, uh, all of that would uh, work really well. It's like, I don't think you will uh, usually find that, but I think it would go well. If you are an adventurous and you would think maybe, um, I don't know if you guys like okra, but okra would be right in the, in the whole um, kind of continent. So that would work really well. Um, with the rice, uh, I think a lot of our starch has kind of leached into the water. So I'm just going to uh, Oh, are we supposed it. to cover this? Yeah, we covered the tomatoes. And uh, we are keeping an eye on it. But uh, we're letting it sweat a little bit. So the other thing about tomatoes, you guys, is that they have a lot of sugar, right? So uh, before we start to adding more liquid, we're letting it sweat and also let like the tomato there touching the bottom, they start to caramelize a little bit. And, you know, all of those things add to the layers and layers of flavor that we're building. Vanessa, do, do, do we have to use tomato paste? No, not at all. You can go, so uh, actually, so in my home, my mom's home, uh, you know, when we do a mukeka, like a midweek mukeka, they were trying to do something on the lighter side. We don't use the dende, the palm oil, and we don't use the, the paste. Then it's just like, it's just a little bit of like more, a, a lighter sauce. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I'm going to give it a stir uh, and then cover it again. Just make sure that um, your heat is not too high. So the tomato is like, is not starting to burn or to get like any brown. Like you will see we're sweating it, but we don't want it to, to like brown it up yet. Um, if there's a little bit happens, it's okay. But all right. So with the rice, uh, now we're just going <clears> to <throat> like drain it and uh, get all the water out. Um, make sure that uh, you have your coconut uh, can is um, ready to go. 
I have two cups, so I'm gonna use. I have um, yeah, I'm gonna use about uh, two cups of water and then the coconut uh, milk. Let me see how the recipe tells us to do. <laughs> because I have my own way of doing it. Coconut rinse them several times. Add the coconut oil, butter, pour in the coconut milk. Add water. Okay. Yeah, so what I like to do with rice, and um, Anya, I would love to know if you, that's something that uh, you can relate or, but um, I like to fry my rice a little bit before I add the the liquid. Absolutely, I believe, absolutely. Yeah, I believe with what you. happens, it will, uh, the, the starch part will kind of um, gelatinize and will help with the texture of the rice, okay? Mm. So, uh, no just so we're not, um, just so we're not too worried about this, uh, let's not put the, the, let's put the tomatoes in a simmer. So we're, we can focus on the rice for a little bit without worrying that something is going bad there. Um, actually, sorry, you guys, I'm improvising, I'm gonna, I'm going to stop you on your tracks. Before we do the rice, I want you to add the bell peppers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just put a layer of bell peppers and, and let's add about like a quarter of water. I want the bell pepper to start out so sweating and getting soft. Sorry about that. So the rice, we're going to start in a minute. So you can see my pot with the tomatoes. Um, this is also a good time. I haven't salted that. So I'm getting a nice five finger pinch of salt. And then I'm going to layer here my peppers. This is, uh, this is not going to be, um, super layered. This we're going to mix all after, but uh, just for this. And then I'm adding about, I don't know, a quarter cup, a half a cup of water, just a little bit. And I'm gonna cover this is low heat, not a simmer, but not thing like nothing crazy, just something manageable. Okay. Now I feel good that uh, my my peppers are softening, and then I can give my full attention to the rice. Sorry for changing the order. So I have a question. Since you said you like to um, fry up your rice a little bit, is is this the right pan, or do I need a saucepan? Uh, do you have a, a lid? I, I would put it in a in a in a saucepan, and I have a another infallible okay. trick for you. All right. All right. Your right. Um, okay. So yeah. again, um, for my measuring friends, I I'm gonna do two. Uh, can someone read the recipe? What did I say there? I I would say about two two tablespoons. Is that right? Uh, Wait, where are you? Sorry. I'm pulling I mean, it out. Um, yep. oh. yeah. um, let me see. Dang, I, yeah, one tablespoon. So for two yes. cups, I said one tablespoon of uh, olive oil or coconut oil or a um, or any veggie oil, okay? And then we have drained our rice pretty well. Because when you add the rice, you actually want it to fry a little bit. So you don't want to have a whole lot of water. Vanessa, don't forget that what people are getting from this class is that they get the inside scoop that you don't get from just reading the recipe. So if you don't follow oh, yeah. the tea, I can adjust it later for our future, you know, future people who look. But show, just tell us how you do it. It's all good. Okay, we good. Do <laughs> good um so when we are when we do a little bit of frying the rice uh what we're doing is kind of creating um a shell almost like a little bit of like a, 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 a less porous shell that will help the rice keep its shape after um like i even with the creamy rice think of sushi you know, you don't want your sushi rice to, uh, well, it's a different kind of rice, but uh, the beauty of sushi rice is still keeps its shape, not a big mush. So with jasmine or even basmati rice, if you fry a little bit before, 
you are helping, you're encouraging it. And I will tell you something, um, you know, I, I don't, I'm not an associate for anything uh, at this point, but um, I can't tell you how different it is, the texture of a good rice, a good quality rice to a mediocre rice. Like it's, you know, so sometimes like I used to be like, go and buy kind of the cheap stuff. But nowadays, like I buy the more expensive stuff and I make sure that I never waste it. Like I, I had some rice that was left over in my studio from an event. It was just some bad, like the whole, no matter what you did, we did to it. It was very, always got mushy. And some like gray basmati rice or high quality of jasmine rice, you will get it done like well at the first try. So um, I grew to respect that. Okay. I agree with that too. A lot of people, they, they're like, I just can't cook rice and they're good cooks and they're always stumped why. And it's such a simple thing, but re in reality, anything in the kitchen, it's high quality is better. Period. It's going to make yeah, all. Yeah. And, and it's still and cheaper than a restaurant. It will definitely be cheaper than a restaurant and uh, it will just like, and then you eat less in a restaurant because now you're eating the real good stuff. Okay. So this is my coconut milk and then. Okay. So if you're going by volume, which I'm not, so don't go, don't do what I'm doing. You want one and a half times the volume of rice that you did. You guys have another trick. Does anybody here have a citrus tree at home? Like a lemon tree or a kaffir lime? I love to make like a, a, a lime or lemon rice, which you just use the tender leaves of your citrus tree and you mm. put it in the rice when it's cooking. My goodness, it's so good. And it's like, you know, a very simple thing to do. That's the All right, dream. So, Can we yeah, show them the rice yet? Uh, yes. So you're going to use one and a half times uh, the, the volume of rice. So if you are using, following the recipe, if you're using two cups of rice, you're going to have in total three and a half cups of liquid, the water and the coconut milk mixed. Okay. So um, the hard part is like the, um, the coconut says in, in, in ml so you can just go and remeasure in your in your cup, measure cup um i can see this is going off it's beautiful all right so i this is a trick that i learned from one of the chefs that i worked in my studio and um thank you babe. she was an asian lady and uh you know that there's some stereotypes but i think it's fair to say that there's a lot of Asian cuisine that use a lot of rice. Um, and uh, here's her trick. And um, if you don't have a rice cooker, once, uh, once you add your liquid, you have, so you guys, this is important. I'm gonna take a deep breath. So I give you a very good instruction. <laughs> so once you, you added your rice, you fried it and you added the liquid. You will have the heat like medium, you know, medium high, just until that liquid starts to bubble. Okay. And then you're going to turn the heat down to the lowest heat you can afford. The lowest heat your stove will go before it turns off. And then you just get a clean kitchen towel and you wrap your pot your top in the kitchen towel and then you top it hmm. well there's something i did not know very low simmer and you're gonna open that as few times as possible so i'm gonna take a look i'm not it's 7 p.m oh you guys i'm over time i'm so sorry we are going to be done, I, I will say, in 20 minutes. I really apologize. Um, I knew this was going to be squeezed. Um, 
So All right, I need to stop you for rice. a second. So, so my yeah. rice is sauteing, and then I put in um, two and a half cup, two, three cup, three and a half cups of liquid. Is there a ratio yeah. of the coconut milk to water, or just a can of coconut milk and the rest water? Exactly. Yeah. And Diane, if that will make a pretty creamy rice, if you, you know, again, that, that yes, the answer is yes. And if you only have like, let's say last week you used a half a can of coconut milk and you froze the other half and today you thawed that half, you use a half, no problem. It's going to be less creamy. Like you, that ratio is going to be to your taste, but okay. the ratio one and a half liquid to one rice that's what you keep well i'm not okay. sure i'm gonna love coconut rice so i'm gonna take a little of it out and then yeah take a the little bit out. In, in a way, start, start with a half a can i'm doing about a half a can to be honest kim oh was that the coconut water or regular water for this part uh there is no coconut water there is uh, there is water and there is coconut milk Okay, because in the recipe it's called, but I don't know when it comes in. That's all I think. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, so you're using uh, just plain water and then either coconut milk or coconut cream. Um, you know, when I see recordings of my classes, I see how many mistakes I make um, in English. So it's very likely that I said coconut water. No, no, no. Um, you didn't I, say coconut water. I'm just that. going by what the shopping list said. So. <laughs> Oh my God! Now, <laughs> now I'm feeling warm. All right. Okay. Vanessa, so I, Vanessa I, what, are next, we not yeah? putting a uh, jalapeno here? The jalapenos. Are we yeah, not? Right, that was uh, I was gonna say. So now we're gonna go back to the moqueca. We're gonna add our pepper, the bananas. Uh, if you're you not banana, sorry, the the uh, the plantain. Okay. So check out, can you see my pot there? So now the tomato almost disintegrated. The peppers are really starting to soften. Okay, I added my, um, my ha jalapeno pepper. And then I'm going to add the, the plantains, not the fish yet, the plantains, the coconut milk, and I'm gonna let the whole thing come to- Wait a minute, um, I just it? put my coconut milk in the rice. We have coconut milk in both. We have coconut milk in the rice and we have coconut milk in the mukeka. And how much do I put in the pot? As much as you have left. The recipe yeah. says one can, but- Okay, um, so I'll, you know, I'll just add water? Yes, you okay. can add water. If Thank you me. are, so guys, if you are doing tomato paste, this is a good time to add your tomato paste, okay? So I'll say that again. We added our pepper. We're gonna add the jalapeno. Uh, sorry, the jalapeno, the tomato paste. If you were doing that now, and you mix it up, so now you see it started to sauce up. How and much then, tomato okay, paste? Let me look at the recipe. I would say about a tablespoon, but I will check it out. Okay. No, my my phone dies. So I don't see my recipe. No problem. No, no, no. I'm very happy to read it food. for you. It says two, two tablespoons. tablespoons. Yep, you're good. Two tablespoons. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, so now here, I'm I'm kind of like, after I, I add the, the plantain, we're gonna be gentle when we stir this because we don't want the plantain to start to like mush it up. Okay. So if you see me doing it, I'm kind of like burying them over there. You can bring your, your heat a little bit up because we want to really like bring this to a heat. So we bring the rice to a boil and then turn it down like normal rice? Yeah, tur yes, turn it down to a, the slowest simmer you can do. And then top, like, if you don't want your, your water to overflow, you will wrap your top in a, in a clean kitchen towel. Okay, but so you don't... You but you bring it to a boil yeah. first, right? Yes. Okay. And I have a question. I also mistakenly put all my coconut milk in my rice and I don't have another can. 
Could I like blend mm -hmm. coconut oil with water or is that a really bad idea? So, I think uh, do exactly. you have it half and half? If you, if you are a friend of like, if you just want to make it creamy, you can add some cream or half and half. Or, or okay. this can be uh, just more of like a tomato base. Red, come jump in if you want. Yeah, I could add some oat milk maybe. Um, and then also I saw a note that uh, maybe Anya recommended adding beans. Should I add those right now? The green beans? Um, like I just, I suggested some like cannellini beans as another protein option. Oh yeah, that, uh, yeah that's a good okay. time. Uh, yes, tonight. that would work really well. Oh. I'll add those now. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry, you guys. I should have brought to your attention the, the whole thing about the, the coconut. Um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I, yeah. I can hear you now. Okay. I want you to meet my friend, Greg. He's my foodie friend that I always Hi, have Greg. Cook something Hi, crazy. How are you guys? Hi, Greg. <laughs> are you this is part great of the to watch dinner you guys. party? I'm, I'm here to eat the Brazilian fish stew. Yes. Oh That's my, my god. Role tonight. <laughs> That's yes. my only role. So happy. Okay, I just want to introduce yeah. him because when I was cooking this, I had to have somebody that I knew would just really enjoy, enjoy having it. it. And it'll so, be me. Yes, yeah, great. <laughs> and his wife, yeah. Lisa. Thank you. Diane, I love how you always use these classes for a for a dinner party. You make it extra special. So smart. <laughs> Do you I recommend still... pairing a white wine or a red wine with this? Ooh. Both. Um, Anya, do you want to answer that? I would, uh, yeah, I would go um, either like a light, crisp, citrusy white wine, like an Albarino, Vino Verde, um, mm -hmm. something like that, or a uh, Gruner Vetliner, Sauvignon Blanc, or I would go red, and um, I'd go for like a medium-bodied red, something with a little spice, like a Rioja, um, a, a Nebbiolo would be really fun. Um, mm -hmm. or even like a Sangiovese, something like that. Something that has a, a decent acidity to hold up to the lime and everything that we have in here. So yeah, I'm drinking a petite Syrah right now, but I'm thinking Ooh. it goes with the no. So well, you know, I, that that might be slightly heavy for this dish, yeah. but it's not horrible. Um, yeah, if you had something that was, where's your petite Syrah from? Uh, this one's Lodi. Lodi, yeah, Gosh. that's probably pretty juicy for this dish yeah, it's a, it, it, i'm a big bowl but i'm I'm always into pairings so i like yeah doing stuff, so I, I love that well i could talk about this all day so yeah <laughs> i would go i would go a little higher acidity with this dish a okay. little little lighter yeah. and a little higher acidity yeah no i, I have a nebbiolo nebbiolo that i've been dying to drink so perfect good. perfect all right you guys um a couple of things we're gonna adjust the salt we're going to add a, a half of a lime squeezed, okay? And this is that moment that if you do have your palm oil, you're going to add add one tablespoon, lightly stir so you don't mush things up, paste. If it's not too much, add another tablespoon. So as no, you can wait, see here. To what dish are we talking about? Oh, we are back to the moqueca, Diane. So the okay. rice is the rice is cooking. Yep. The farofa is going to be the last thing, very quick. We're back to the stew. So what did we do? We added the the banana. The, the sorry, plantains. we added the plantains, the coconut milk. Now we're going to squeeze a half a lime and uh, adjust the salt. If you are using the palm oil. This is a time to add one tablespoon at a time. So I'm I'm going with one tablespoon all together. Like I'm not adding more than that because I don't want to make it too strong. My boyfriend is from the Midwest. I'm breaking him in slowly into the Brazilian cuisine. I don't want it to be too crazy. Is it at a simmer? Wait, Vanessa, I, I probably yeah. missed that part with the vegetables um we have to add coconut milk there <laughs> okay yes so uh you had the tomato and the bell pepper everything right? is there now everything i need is there mm -hmm. everything you need is there and uh if according to the recipe you are adding a can of okay. coconut milk Good. that's too much i'm afraid <laughs> okay just add there we go i love the way you you think add less no problem 
So as you see here, I have everything. I added a little bit of the one tablespoon of the palm oil. I'm gonna taste. Oh wait. Oh, I forgot to add this. Oh How God. much uh, mm. coconut milk do I add to the vegetables? <clears throat> it's really up to you. I think up to a, a can. No. Or you can add a little bit less, okay? And I come um, add a little bit of water if you want it to be a little lighter. Mm -hmm. Mukaka usually is a pretty creamy, as you can see here, it becomes a pretty creamy sauce. So I'm going to let it um, cook a little bit open so it evaporates and it starts to thicken a little. Mm. And taste it. <clears throat> I added the entire can and it's fantastic. But I love coconut, you know, milk yeah. liquids. Me I use too. it in everything. Coconut if rice. We is one of my have things. coconut cream and coconut milk. Which one's better for the rice and which one's better for the... The coconut cream is better for the mukeka. Okay, perfect. If it's yeah. not overpowering, it's That's really good. good. Okay, my rice has dried up. I'm turning it off. And I'm just going to partially uncover and sit it in the back. So um, let me show you guys. Sorry, what uh, temperature what... is your rice on? My rice was um, in the lowest simmer you could afford as Got low it. as a simmer as your stove will afford okay you guys we have this farofa comes together in like three five minutes and then it's done sorry for going over time again you're doing great vanessa i think this group came loaded with questions today which definitely adds adds extra time so um excited for the for the farofa <laughs> to dive in and i want to show like the yeah you guys had great questions uh i prefer uh, classes to be more interactive like that and um you know uh, if your guys are okay with it i am definitely okay with it yeah. one more question adding on to yeah. that were we supposed to have added the fish already not yet we're gonna add the fish once the farofa comes together and uh, yeah you are then you add the fish we're gonna like just let the whole thing come back to a, a boil. We're gonna cover and stop it. And that's your time to set the table. You know, like the fish cooks in like five minutes or less. So we can really add at the end. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So um, did we last squeeze part lime? Did we squeeze lime into the vegetable? We did, we did. Uh, after we added the coconut milk, we're adjusting with salt and is squeezing a half a lime. Uh -huh. Okay. And for, and for me, uh, the, the fish and shrimp will go tomorrow, right? For you, you're going to stop here and the fish and the, the, the shrimp will go tomorrow. Exactly. All right. For the farofa, you guys, I like to mix a little bit of um, half of butter and half olive oil because I'm decadent. <laughs> what are we mixing again? A little bit, not too decadent. All right, women, I missed that. Are we starting something new? Um, so Diane, we are starting the last thing and that's the, the farofa, the, the dressing. Okay. okay? So Do we need, I'm we need going, a bowl? you know what? I'm going to actually I'm gonna move the the mukeka. You guys know, like you know what's going on there. I'm gonna move yeah, love here to see the farofa. It, so do we I cook added, it. Do we cook it? Um. Okay. Let me. So the, your mukeka is cooking. Yeah. Just you are just um just leave it in a low heat. You can uh, leave the top on because you're thickening. Okay. okay. The rice is ready. Now the last thing we're gonna do is the farofa, which is the dressing. The dressing is the panko, the panko dressing, the crunch. It's like a panko crunch. So, so what do we I do did, it in a bowl or a, are we on uh, a stove? We're doing in a in a pan, in a sorry, okay. in a saute pan. That okay. saute pan that you had pulled before. Yep. Uh, so I added one tablespoon of butter and one tablespoon of olive oil. Okay. And uh, we are going to saute these onions 
Oh, apples. In onions, this yeah. case, we want the onions to go just like golden brown. We're going to get them a little bit beyond the... Um, a little bit beyond... <clears throat> What's the name? The the translucent. So you can just check out my onions on the stove. Now I really wish I had invited my friends to come over for dinner because we have a lot of food. <laughs> <laughs> you want well, to I, I love it's your good. idea. It's Not better tomorrow, rodeo. right? So, oh, yeah. so we're just there waiting for the butter to li become liquid, right? Okay, we're almost done, you guys. Here is the, can you see both? Where is that camera? Yeah, you can see both, yeah. I've lost my recipe, so how much panko do I need to measure? Um. So, you know, this will... That's about one and a half cups. Have, how many people do you have for dinner? Four, but I have plantains, fish, and shrimp in my dish. Yeah, so um, a cup, a cup and a half. Okay. Yeah, this will hold out well. Did you already put the onions in? I'm sorry. So I, um, I put the onions uh, with... Um, one tablespoon of olive oil and one tablespoon of butter. Right, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna try to text my friends and see who wants to come for dinner. <laughs> My rice is not cooking, I can tell you that. What do you mean is not cooking? It's still a lot of liquid. Oh, uh, it's going to cook. Um, as long as you put the right um, the right amount of the, the liquid, you will be fine. Well, in addition to uh... that, I spilt the panko all over the floor. <laughs> oh, no. So that's really I think we fun. should have a camera only on Diane. It's a crunchy, <laughs> crunchy floor now. But I've got more panko, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone here ever freeze their leftover tomato paste? I never use a full can. Oh, you definitely it, freeze it. Okay. I do, yeah. And I, and I would do what, uh, you know, Anya was saying, dividing into, like, a cu ice cubes. Because oh. then you're going to fall and just, yeah, so just portion it. Oh, we just Burn. need more paste in the fridge. Oh, should I freeze it? Not in the can. Oh, yeah, okay. take it out of the can so it doesn't rust. That's a good point, Diane. No, I mean, I have a, a, a tube. Yeah, I just put mine in Tupperware. It goes right in the freezer. Boy, this is looking excitingly tasty. Pretty pumped. Yeah, it smells so good. Also, um, a fun idea here from Trang. Uh, with your tomato paste, you can also mix it with soy sauce and then make it make it a red rice. So you can put it in rice with like a chicken mm -hmm. roti. So just a fun, another fun tomato paste idea. I love that, Trang. Super cool. Thank you. Should we, we have added the panko crumbs yet? Yeah. So do you guys see in my uh in my onions that are they starting to get like brown up a little bit? Uh, a little so bit. this is a good time to add your panko. Uh and so with the panko, careful so you don't spill it all over because it's very easy to do that. <laughs> um yes. and then what you're gonna do is um we're gonna toast this panko a little bit. So after you add it, you mix in with the onions. Wow, it's so there's And then you in let mind. it uh kind of like sit cover the cover the bottom of the pan here. Okay. 
and then we're gonna oh. like don't don't stir right now leave it for like a minute or two without stirring because you're gonna be browning that bottom of the panko now oh. you guys is the time we add the fish and the shrimp to the top of your mukeka so here i'm gonna show you what my pot is beautiful boiling here and i'm just gonna what goes in my first shrimp. fish or shrimp uh it doesn't matter because you see how i'm kind of like you just kind of make a layer on top and then you're gonna like push it just a little bit and then you are gonna cover it and it will steam in there can i just dump it or do i have to place it Do I dump it or just but place then it? Use a fork to separate it because you want it to touch the, the, the surface of the liquid. Okay. Oh, so it doesn't go all the way in, right? Uh, it doesn't have to go all the way in. I kind of like to just uh, put it on top. It's also easier to serve. So you will portion. If the fish goes in, sometimes it will kind of come apart. Mm -hmm. I see. And then... um. And then check out, like, um, I'm turning the camera to the far off for now. You see how it's nice, getting nice and, like, uh, golden? No. Uh, let's make sure we add some salt and pepper to this farofa and taste it. You know, like, we always taste as we go. Salt and pepper to the panko? Yes. This is gonna this is gonna uh, be really tasty and like seasoned with the butter and the onion. And you cover the fish in the pot. I cover the fish. Yes. Vanessa, I'm using cassava flour with my instead of panko. We're going oh for it. Oh my god, you are an overachiever! I went to two stores today and I couldn't find it. Really, mm. I'm surprised. I get my name. Well, I'm just happy I found gluten free panko. You guys, taste, taste your panko. That's is, so it, is it supposed to be browning? Is the panko supposed to be browning? Yes, yes, yes. Turn it so up. it got slightly brown. The onions got a little brown. Um, you know, it will keep on cooking. So if, uh, Unless you're transferring right away, make sure to be stirring so you don't burn the bottom. It's supposed to be completely dry, right? Because I don't have any more liquid in my pan. Oh, the panko? Yeah. That is totally dry. It's a dry, oh, okay. crunchy, like a crunchy bread crumb. Okay, cool. Mm. Okay. It's crunchy on my floor. I can tell you that. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to here. Um, here's our. Uh, you can. I'm just going to turn my shrimp here. You guys right. um, taste, taste your mukeka. I want you to taste and tell me if there is anything that you feel that is not to your taste that you might want my help with adjusting. You said flip the shrimp? I, I just added a little more lime, a little more salt, and a little more pepper. I even added a little there paprika because uh, you mentioned that the dende smelled a little bit like paprika. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. I thought that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And do you remember that I told you that the last thing you're going to do, we're just going to do a very quick uh, chop of a little bit of herbs. So beautiful. if you have both cilantro and parsley, okay, you, um, you will chop just the parsley front and add it to the panko. And you will chop cilantro and add it to the mukeka. Okay. Parsley to the panko. Parsley to the farofa, cilantro to the mukeka. And what is the definition of a sprig? <laughs> oh, oh um, my guy shows up. What was that? 
<laughs> Let me show you. A sprig is something that is held by one stem. And I so got confused now. Which is going to which? <laughs> the parsley goes to the farofa. The cilantro okay. goes to the mukeka. If you That's guys nice. switch it off, not a problem. Not a problem at all. Uh, one interesting uh, trick, though, I don't know if how many of you know that is, but with the cilantro, you're welcome to use the entire spread, the stem, the spread. Leaf, even the roots for cilantro. For parsley, we only want the leaves. So I'm going to say it again. With cilantro, you use the whole thing. Just chop the whole thing. Parsley, just the leaves. You know, cilantro is interesting because the seed of a cilantro is the coriander. And then we also, in Thai cuisine, uh, Thai cuisine, we use the, the root for our uh, Thai paste. So uh, mm. cilantro is something that you use the entire plant. Uh, my parsley uh, stem, I'm adding to the vegetable broth bag along with the onion peels. And it's going to go back to the freezer. You guys, this is a very advanced class. There is a lot going on here, okay? Starting you, a bag. I'm starting a bag. go to Brazil, like... I, I can, I bet you money, you, you find me, I bet you money that uh, three quarters of the people you ever meet, they, well, even more, they don't know how to make mukeka, even though it's a very popular dish. So you guys accomplished a lot. And uh, I am going to serve it just so you see how it's served. You serve more cilantro on the side so people can add it? That is a great idea, Diane. I think just put in a little bowl. That's all that goes in this now, the panko, right? The parsley goes in the panko, yes. I mean, that's it, right? That's the last one. And then we are done, you guys. Vanessa, you'll be very proud of me. I started the bag. <laughs> oh, good. There we go. <laughs> I think I all my garlic peels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I never would have thought of that. It feels I very resourceful. All the pepper, all the pepper cores, whatever. I, yeah. So um, uh, let me tell you, you don't use the bottom. Sorry about the, don't use the pepper cores. No. Anya, would you agree with me? Yeah, I would 100%. <laughs> well, just because it's going to be really spicy. No, and no, it, no. Might, I, it might I get a little bitter. I took out the seeds, though, just the bottom. Okay. Um, you mean like the stem and stuff? I, I'm i no. not sure about the stem. That's a, yeah. What do you think, Vanessa? I really don't do that often, so I haven't experimented with it. The, the oh. seeds would be my only concern. Good. I would say. Did you salt um, and pepper the uh, panko? I would say that for the future, I would um I would keep uh, peppers, tomatoes like um out of there. Like I would use definitely like the peels and like potatoes, carrots, um, uh, what's the name? Parsley stems, onions, yeah, yeah, yeah. garlic. Um, mm -hmm. what is it? celery? Just usually the vegetables that you put in a broth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like, it's not common to use peppers in a broth. No, it's not. But I meant the bell pepper. There we go. I think you're going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah, bell pepper is probably oh, okay. okay. Um, Nikki, did we, salt, a and good pepper the, uh, did we yeah. salt and pepper the panko? You definitely salt and pepper the panko. Flavor, so, Diane. Always go for flavor. Um, All right, so I want to show you guys here how I would uh, mount a plate. Hey, Vanessa, and, while, you're, because, mm -hmm. while you're getting this ready, can I, well, can you give me a moment whenever you think yes. it's good just to say something? Okay. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, I love that reaction. This is a great time. <laughs> okay, I was figuring. While you get it all ready in that gorgeous plate. Um, 
those of you, I know as soon as we plate these, we're going to be popping off pretty quickly. So big thanks, first of all, to Vanessa for coming on today and teaching this class. You are such a rock star. So fun to, to you know, try something new. I'm glad everyone got a, a taste of someone else for once and didn't just listen to me the whole time. So, um, but this looks awesome. I cannot wait to serve it. My husband's going to love it. Uh, really pumped. And um, and I, I hope to collaborate with you many, many times again. Um, those of you who are members, we love you. Thank you all. Thank you so much for always coming. I'm going to put in the chat a link to leave feedback. So if you haven't already, um, please do. It, it means so much to me. I, we, you know, we work so hard and feedback is helpful. Those of you who have left feedback, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Um, those who are not members, I will also put a link in the chat. It'll be a little, slightly different link if you're not a member. So um, take a look in a second and your feedback means everything. So please, please, please take a couple minutes after class and leave me feedback. Um, it would mean the world to us. And if you loved this class and you want to join, we'd love, love, love to have you. So you can be part of so many more wonderful experiences that we have coming up. We have um, caramelized carrot tart with homemade ricotta. We have uh, tempeh rubens with some homemade Thousand Island dressing. We have uh, a Brazilian, I'm sorry, not a Brazilian, um, a Malfi salted uh, branzino coming up. So anyway, a lot of cool stuff. Uh, make sure to RSVP for classes. And, um, oh, and then last thing I'll tell you guys is we have a new gluten-free masterclass that we spent a lot of time putting together. So Ooh. yeah, if you want to learn the, the, the true essential things you need to know about cooking gluten-free, this gluten-free, that gluten-free soba noodles, gluten-free pizza dough, gluten-free pretzels, um, to perfection, uh, my gluten-free cookies, banana bread, all sorts of stuff. Um, that's now available on pre-sale for 20% off discount until it goes okay. live in July. So anyway, that's all I have to say. Oh, oh, one second, real quick. How did yeah. you plate it? Yeah, plate this. It. Oh. So now <laughs> Vanessa's going to plate, but I wanted to get that Bring all in before you guys Bring ran it. away. All right. So we gave Vanessa a breather there. Nope, bowls. Oh. In that room on the in the chest. Bring the bowls, babe. I forgot them. <laughs> so Raj... Underneath, there's like two sides. All right, let's see it, Vanessa. Gorgeous. Look at that plate. Is that wood? It looks wooden. It's so cool. For some reason, I can't hear you. Can you guys still hear her? No. Oh, okay. She's on mute. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> I muted myself while you were talking. Yeah, I just there. do that and, um, you know, make sure that you get some of that beautiful shrimp or everybody got a, a, you know, a variety of um, the protein or so, the bananas. And then I just add a little fresh cilantro. And that's your dish. So wait, rice is on the side and panko's on the side? Yeah, yeah, Funny. yeah, I would say so. I just, like, we don't mix it all together. Then you have a chance to be mixing more. And then... You know what happens a lot, you guys, your guests are going to want more of the sauce or more, you know, so having a pot or something that can be close by or on the table that then they can help. You will see, like people never just eat one serving of this and we don't need a, a knife with this. So I would serve with a spoon and a fork because you want to be eating all that delicious sauce. I'm going to take a bite. Oh, <laughs> incredible. <laughs> The best mm -hmm. part. <laughs> mm. Really good. Perfection. I will say that uh, you guys got a real taste of a very authentic muqueca. I feel like you, like, if you ever go to Brazil and you have, it's just like, that's what I make at home. Yes. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. So impressive. Vanessa, yeah. amazing. You guys, yes. make, sure to, um, make sure to check out her kits, especially if you have a family. Uh, yeah, yeah, a club left. artistas. If um, you know, if you have it's a so small much. one, or if you want to oh. gift that to someone that has like kids that are rice, between rice four rice. and ten, we have really nice, really cool recipes like bao buns and crepes and nice. everything super creative. So please, and you know what? I'm not gonna hold you guys up because that's time for dinner, and uh, I'm very respectful of that. I appreciate your time so much, Anya. Thank you so much for inviting me. This was a, a blast. 
You rock. You Thank rock. You, Diane. Lovely, <laughs> lovely. Thank you. Thank you, so much. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Guys. Thank Can't you. wait to see you soon. Thank you. Obrigada, Chef. Thank you. See you soon. Bye, you Thank guys. You. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you, Andrew. Great having you. Um, yeah, it was it was fun to join. So I'll take a bite to see if 